we are live. So, welcome to more about my channel. So, I am going to jump directly into the first section. My reviewing philosophy. I decided to do another video that can help give people a sense of what to expect on my channel. So I don't intend to repeat what I said in the first two. The playlist with them will be linked in the description box. If this video seems too long and in-depth for you, please don't feel obligated to watch the whole thing or even any of it. This is purely so that those who want answers to these questions that I answer in this video don't have to individually ask me and then for me to, you know, answer them individually and, and such. So, let's see. I am gonna... Yeah, some of the following I also say at the start of videos, but yeah, some of it I'm gonna go into here. The vast majority of the time, I record a video as soon as I can get to the computer after finishing watching the movie, TV show season, full TV shows run, after completing the video game. And I tend to watch movies in theaters as soon as I can. And it varies somewhat, but I very frequently try to, whether or not I swear in a video, tend I try to base that on whether or not they swear in the movie. So, it's, you know, basically, you know, the, the stuff that's in the movie, I might quote or describe or reference. But I try to not use swearing in stuff that's for, you know, as a, as a quick example, I'm pretty sure I didn't swear in my, did I do more than one video? Anyway, the, the video or videos I did on the game, which is excellent by the way, Beyond Good and Evil, which is rated T for teens, if I recall, by the, the video game board. Sensor. Yeah. And yeah, there's, you know, there's no swearing in that game and I don't swear or describe anything that would go beyond a, a teen rating. And, you know, I, I don't like describe gore, for example, which I do sometimes do in videos that are R-rated, even if there isn't gore in the movie. And... Excuse me. A brief. Ex excuse me. This is the first about me style video that I've done since I developed. <sighs> See, I always, I always forget if it is technically actual, accurate, actually accurate to refer to it as carpal tunnel syndrome or tennis elbow. I feel like every time I ask. Every other physical therapist says it is, and the, the rest say it's not. But it's something like that. So, while I used to do reviews, I, I don't... Today, I'll, uh, you know, I, I'll do TV show reviews when I've worked my way through an entire TV show. You know, watching one episode a day until I watch the whole run. Other than that, I don't really do reviews anymore and I have had a really long break from video games entirely. I I don't know if, for sure if I'm gonna make another video once I'm done. You know, if you're watching this video and you can see that I recently did a movie review rather than a thoughts on movie video or a video talking about video games it's pres very likely I've gotten the the situation under control to to an extent where I can play video games again. But 
instead, you know, I, I, it didn't take me very long before I realized I wouldn't be able to, I, I would go nuts if I stopped recording videos until my wrists were better. So instead, I simply changed the format. And that's why, you know, now I, I basically do, excuse me, basically, I forgot, yeah, it didn't break. I almost sat on something and I only just now realized. Anyway, basically, I, while watching, I'll voice type notes into a document and when I watch the entire thing, when I do the video, I will you know, use those notes as the jumping off point, but I no longer separate into specific topics the way that I used to before my wrists got bad. So it's harder for, you know, like, let's hypothetically say you want to know what I think of Jared Letter's Joker. Well, my Suicide Squad video is long, but you can go into the description box and there's, I forget if there's more than one section, but if there is more than one section, you can find the different, each of those sections on the, the list of subjects and you just click the time code, it'll take you right there. You know, you don't have to spend hours watching that video if you don't want to, if you only want to know what I think of Jared Leto's Joker, for example. But more recently, I make long videos and the only ones where I put a lot of dis um, different sections, um, yeah, are the TV show thoughts videos where I do individual, you know, each episode gets its own individual section. So that's, I, I don't know exactly what it'll look like when my wrists get better, but I can imagine I will try to get back to like an, an overall more, what's it called? See, part of the thing is also that I used to sit and watch my video back and then note where I change subject. And I don't know if I'm going back to that, but I might go back to, I, I used to, for example, make one called plot and one called character the way I still do when I do a TV show review. If you look at my Without a Trace review, there's a section called plot, there's a section called characters. You know, I might go back to doing that for, for movies as well, but, and it's possible I'll just straight up do another video for this playlist when I, when my wrists are better and when I, you know, obviously at that point I will make a decision about what to do. But, Basically, a typical video of mine will have, from from when I got the, from when my wrists got bad and onwards, there will be three sections. One that's thoughts that I had while watching in chronological order. The next is thoughts I had before watching, and let's see, yeah, and and the final section. Actually, let me, yeah, let me just briefly, the, the second section is basically sometimes if, if it's a movie I haven't watched yet, then it's what do I think might be in this movie that I definitely want to comment on. And I'll basically write a note that says, remember to comment on this so that if I would otherwise not remember to, then yeah. And sometimes it's for a movie that I have watched, and sometimes it's for a movie I haven't watched for years, but I remember distinct stuff that I want to say. So I put that in that section so that it doesn't clog up the first section. And yeah, you know, I, I mean, basically, the first section is essentially somewhat like an MST3K or like uh, what's it called? Like a like a 
immediate thoughts kind of thing, you know, like this is, this is exactly the thing that I got to thinking from, you know, watching, which is also like, it's, it's very rare that I wait very long between finishing a thing and then starting to record. I realize that sometimes it's beneficial to wait, but I find that for me, just the passion is never going to be as strong as right after, you know, and yeah, sometimes I will later think, ah, oh, I wish I thought of that, but I have done videos where I waited longer and I just feel like it doesn't, I, I feel the videos suffer more for it than in the other way around. So the final section, the third section of video, I get into stuff that I think is worthwhile to get into on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, IMDb, and Wikipedia. And before recording a vlog, I'll I'll read either it's yeah, there are a couple of options. Maybe I'll read all of it, maybe I'll read most of it, maybe I'll read the stuff that doesn't have spoilers if it's something I have you know in um hmm, two weeks, I guess. In two weeks, I'm doing a video on U571, or is it U571? Anyway, I don't speak U boat. So that movie I haven't watched yet. So I didn't read the stuff that has spoilers. I copied it into the file, and I don't know 100% if I'm gonna read. I, I probably won't read all of it bef between watching the movie and recording, but I might read or at least skim some of it. I don't know for sure. Anyway, when there aren't spoilers, when, when it's not, when it's something I already know the details of, I read all of it. But sometimes I start reading weeks, even months ahead of time, so sometimes I forget. And if you're not interested in the contents of all three sections, I invite you to only watch the ones you are interested in. And sometimes I do regular reviews on things I make thoughts videos for, sometimes not. It's not likely that I'll do a review of anything other than a TV show anytime soon. Basically, when it's for a TV show, the thing is that if I take notes and separate them into sections for that, or rather, when I do that, I can do that over the course of months because it's like like I said I watch an episode a day of a TV show so it will always be months. I it's been a really long time since I did a short TV show anyway. It's possible I'll get back to it. Anyway, not currently none no short TV shows are planned. That means that I can split the action of m moving notes into a lot of short, you know, uses of my wrists, and otherwise I don't have to use my wrists as much. Whereas if I every single week have to separate into five different sections, moving notes between them, uh, that's too much for my wrists. Simply, that's learned that the hard way. So, this video is, sorry, when I do videos, I'm not saying that I'm smarter than the viewer or that I know more or know better. The stuff I say in the videos I make, I'm not saying I'm the only one who could have thought of it or have thought of it. It's just stuff I want to talk about and think others would enjoy listening to. You know, the... the I am not a very social person. But on the occasions that I have socialized, I have found that not everyone, but some people find me very funny and charming and they like hearing what I thought about a movie. And basically my videos are just... That, that way I don't have to say it to each individual person that I would otherwise talk about the movie with, you know, the, I can just direct them to the video. And some people don't find me funny or charming or insightful, 
and I don't expect any of them to watch what I do, and I don't, I don't have any problem with, you know, to each their own. Whatever floats your boat, your mileage may vary, and so on and so forth. There's no, you know, I, I don't really have some big, frail ego about, you know, everybody has to agree with what I think. I've, yeah. Now, let's see. In some videos, I discuss issues that either don't affect me or don't affect me as much as it does certain minorities. I'm not trying to lecture those that it affects. In part, I'm speaking to those who are not in those minorities so that, you know, to, to make it e to help the, the, the process of empathizing with those minorities. I found that some people have a hard time listening to members of minorities. And I don't, I'm not going to get into some big rant about that here, but I found that some people, I've, I've had conversations with people where when I talk to them about sexism, they listen to me. But when women talk to them about sexism, even if they're not like accusing them personally, they just don't listen. They don't. And, and I, yeah, I, I want to try to help. Even if that's the only, yeah. And, and, and in part, I'm expressing my interpretation of the material without claiming that it's as valid as the interpretation of members of the minorities. Now, let's see. When I talk about the quality and what I'm, what I'm doing video on, I try to strike a good balance between being appreciative of both intentions and results, criticizing things I genuinely feel should be criticized. Some of these... I've only more recently, if you watch videos I did, you know, I've been here for almost 11 years now, so, yeah, some of my older videos are very, very different from some of my newer videos, as tends to be the case with someone who's been around for a while. I'm currently talking about the way my more recent videos are. I, I believe it's since 2017 that my videos are more, yeah. And I try to judge the subject on its own terms. If it's just trying to be entertaining, is it entertaining? If it's trying to be smart, is it, etc. You know, if it's something that's just trying to be entertaining, it's not trying to be smart, then if it's not smart, I don't think personally that it's necessarily that useful of a criticism to say this isn't very smart. If it doesn't think it's smart, if it's very clearly not, you know, but if it's something that is trying to be smart, but isn't, especially if, you know, I, I just last night listened to Film Brain review The Hunt, and he talks about that that movie really thinks that it's just, it's completely, excuse me, it's completely nailed what it's about. You know, it, it completely understands these people, and that's really obnoxious. I haven't watched that movie. I probably won't. I freaking Dean Lindelof. Anyway, and let's see, you know, for example, when reviewing a slasher movie, you know, I enjoy quite a few slasher movies. As fans of the genre, we're not looking for the best story or characters. We're looking for the most tension and suspense, the most creative scenes of someone being taken out. A murder mystery doesn't have to have incredible special effects. Under the right circumstances, drama, horror, and comedy all really thrive on minimalism. And if characters behave in a way in a movie that isn't constructive, that doesn't necessarily make the movie bad, although obviously that kind of thing can get frustrating. And something that else that can get frustrating, but can also work really well, is when horror, fantasy, and science fiction doesn't seem to follow rules that the viewer can comprehend because it appeals to our concept of something being inexplicable. In fact, it might frustrate you, but that doesn't automatically make it bad. 
it might be intentional the way that horror movies intentionally scare people you know the the when someone leaves a movie and they're frustrated with it that doesn't necessarily mean sometimes it does but it doesn't always mean that the movie did something wrong and i think some people sometimes kind of get locked into habits where they want movies to not be frustrating and it's sometimes seems as though maybe they're just they're they're watching a genre of movie that maybe just isn't for them you know and i don't i don't say that to exclude anyone you know you watch what you want to watch but if you keep for example if you find horror movies frustrating there are definitely some that are bad but i've heard people express frustration over some of the best horror movies ever made and simply the the you know it it it's because when there's something that scares us part of our like we 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 kind of want to avoid it because we don't want to be scared you know the 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 lizard brain like flares up and it's like you've got to get away from this you don't want to be near something scary and because of that sometimes we get frustrated with horror movie characters that behave in self-destructive ways and for sure sometimes it's really badly done but sometimes that is the idea a lot of great horror movies are specifically about that these people behave in ways that cause problems you know i i don't think i used to and that's because my father is a teacher and my mother was a teacher well, I mean, my father's retired by now, but he spent a lot of his working life as a teacher. I think most of his working life as a teacher. So I used to think that the correct approach to fiction was basically to correct everything that wasn't ideal. So, for example, like, like yeah, let's say that you have a character who seemed to steal something. You know, the the teacher, you know, impulse is to say... That's not the right thing to do. He should pay for those things. You know, the movie isn't necessarily saying that it's right to steal. If, if it was, if, if a movie tells you you should be stealing things, you shouldn't pay, that's wrong, obviously. But it's not wrong to have a protagonist who does immoral things. That can be a great vehicle, a great tool to explore what happens when you do immoral things what makes people do immoral things you know and i yeah i find that that's i i personally that's the the approach i want to take and it's perfectly fine if that's not you know that that's not for everyone you know basically horror and fantasy you know, to, to a certain extent, they're supposed to not reflect reality. And, of course, this varies from piece to piece. But the things that scare and amaze us are inherently beyond our understanding and outside of our reality. There are, of course, exceptions, as there always is. But fundamentally, it's not scary or fantastical anymore if it obeys rules that human minds understand. Now... And if, if a film is what it wants to be, then I find it makes more sense to criticize, you know, then, yeah, criticize what it wants to be rather than going into a lot of detail about how well made it is, if it is what it wants to be. For example, I've seen people criticize I'm not going to get very much into it here, but the movie 300, I've seen people say, this movie doesn't, you know, the, the movie takes me out of it, or, or such, you know, I, I don't get transported away, I'm reminded that I'm watching a movie, and I feel that the movie isn't entirely supposed to transport you away, it's supposed to feel like you're being told a story. And 
I don't think that it, I, I find that most, almost everything in the movie serves that well. And I think there's, you can argue that maybe, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe it should feel real rather than a story we're being told. And I, I can understand why not everybody feels that it's completely satisfying. You know, the, I'm not spoiling that movie, but by the end of that movie, you understand why this is in the sh in the form of a story being told to the audience. And I understand not feeling satisfied with that explanation and feeling that it was a mistake. And for sure, I mean, there are things you could criticize. It is pretty silly that Gerard Butler is, you know, he does nothing to conceal his, I want to say, Scottish accent. You know, he's put on an American accent in other movies. I don't know exactly. I, I guess... Maybe he can't, like, the, the big shouty lines, maybe he can't do those without an accent, so they were like, okay, fine, just use the accent the whole movie. That's something you can criticize, but I don't, I don't feel it makes that much sense to criticize the movie for the use of speed ramping, for example, because I feel it achieves its intended effect. You can criticize why the, you know, why did they choose to go for that intended effect? But when it does what it means to, I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to, to then criticize. And, you know, I've, you know, one really major criticism is, of course, that it is very, you know, it is a movie that takes shots at a lot of marginalized people and that's really messed up and that's something you can criticize but the individual yeah i feel i've described it as, as um, i define a quote-unquote good movie as one where the good outweighs the bad and vice versa for a quote-unquote bad movie and this can mean that a movie otherwise mostly good or bad you know, I consider actually overall bad or good. And that... I, uh, I did not think to include examples. I think maybe... I haven't watched The Jazz Musician. But when I watched... I want to say it was Rap Critic who did a review of that movie... And for a lot of it, he said that it's it's pretty good. But then he arrives at that really messed up part. And he says that one part really does destroy the whole movie. I would probably feel the same way if I watched that movie. And that's kind of what I mean. You know, if you have one really, really messed up thing. You know, I personally... I think, yeah, and sometimes a movie that is, that has a lot of bad is, yeah, some, if, if there's a little bit that's really, really great, and the movie, like, overall leaves you with a, a feeling that kind of, that that was what you, you wanted, you know, some movies are saved by the ending, and some movies are ruined by the ending. So, sometimes I'll do multiple videos on the same subject, and I tend to put the links in the description box, and sometimes I link to a playlist that has those other ones. And when I make videos, I try not to restate what I say in another video on the same subject. Now, I try to... In general, I try not to express bitterness at the money I spent on a movie, but when I watch the movie without myself having to pay or not having to pay very much, I try to bring that up because I do know that is something some people find. And, and you know, some people find that very useful. I personally don't. I, I don't think I really 
judge that sort of thing the same way other people do. So I, I sometimes hear people say, I really wish I hadn't spent money going to the theater to watch that for a movie that I feel the, that I don't feel that way about at all. And I think it's maybe also that other people go to the movies substantially more than I do or have substantially more unpleasant experiences with going to the movies. I There's not very much about going to movies that I don't like. I I know that other people, you know, the, the um, what was it, the usual su suspect, I think he's called, did a video, looks kind of dark, I guess, nah, it's, it's okay, did a video, I don't know, maybe a year ago, maybe, maybe, I, I don't remember, some months ago, for sure, where he listed all the things he dislikes about movie theaters, and for some of it, I was like, mm, I can kind of see that, but there were things that he said where I was like, I don't, that is not my experience at all. So, you know, basically, like, I think if you watch me review a movie that's currently in theaters, me saying that I had a good time during it doesn't mean, that's not me saying you're definitely going to have a good time during it too. I basically, I think it takes a lot for me to have a negative experience going to the movies. But I, when a movie is genuinely not very good, I do try to, to say that, although I do, I no longer really like going really negative on something, unless it's something that's actually important. But if a movie, uh, you know, a movie wasn't that good, that's not the end of the world, you know. Now, so, I try to watch videos on YouTube and special features on DVD and Blu-ray before doing videos on a subject when that is applicable but not always and not definitely not all of the YouTube videos some have crazy many so I I don't think I've particularly done it yet but from now on I intend to try to talk about if there's more than one version of a movie you know, if it's something that's on DVD or Blu-ray, and you have access to different versions, I'm going to try to mention which I'm going off, so that you know if it's going to make sense. And I try to mention when I first watched the thing, and how many times I've watched it since, when I do a video on it, since that makes a lot, that makes a really big difference in how you, how critical you're going to be of something. And, yeah, I, I don't think this has come up yet, but I do, if at some point I experience something where I want, where, where I feel it's relevant to bring up that there was a thing that made people change their perspective on a movie, it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring up if, if it did or didn't for me, I'm going to try... To, yeah, I, I try to mention if I have watched other parts of the franchise. I, I gotta admit, that's probably one of my favorite things about movies, especially nowadays. I'm really glad that it's it's nothing like when I was a child and a teenager. Today, franchises... It, it Franchise isn't always a, a, a good thing, but certainly there is a certain... I, 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 I think there are some incredible franchises. I love the MCU. And some other franchises, it's just, it's interesting to compare. I think the DCEU, it's, it's such an interesting journey they've had. And they really do seem to be on the right path now. You know, other than Justice League, every DCEU movie that has come out since and including Wonder Woman, they're not all equally good, but there isn't there isn't a bad one in there. They they all have something to really offer to the audience. You know, they they listen to the audience and actually went in other directions. And there are still some really dark movies in there, but they're not Snyder dark because that just wasn't what people wanted. You know, and 
I mean, if you want Snyder Dark, he's made several movies by now. Just go back and watch those. You know, I, I think it's, it really doesn't seem like there are, the, the, the sort of mainstream audience is still interested in, or at least not this, not Snyder Dark versions of Batman and Superman and the Justice League, you know. But I, I find it much more interesting to compare and contrast the DCEU entries than to just talk about, for example, you know, years ago it was just, oh, so here are several dramas that touch upon the same suspect, su subjects. Or, you know, here's, uh, here are horror movies that are in the same vein as each other. Now, I, I will sometimes in videos make jokes that should not necessarily be taken as me thinking the thing I'm joking about is actually bad or me wanting to make light of a serious su subject. I simply find it very difficult to not MST3K and overanalyze everything I watch and play. And sometimes I just filter those out. Other people don't hear them, but a lot of times I leave them in. I, I've had the, the serious consideration and I do genuinely feel I want to say those things, you know, otherwise I wouldn't. And sometimes the version of a movie I watch is a more or less censored one. And I try to bring up if I think that is the case before I start going into detail about the video. I, I don't know about, excuse me, I don't know too much about how other people feel, but I certainly know there are movies like, if you watched a censored version of The Thing, I'm sorry. I'm... If, if you haven't watched the uncensored version, the regular, the theatrical cut and such, I just don't think there's that much... Some of the, some of the most important things to that movie are the things that they would censor away. So it, it just wouldn't be... It, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to, to you know... The, the things that you would be saying about the movie, I, I might completely disagree with. So, it, you know, if, if you don't, if you watch, one, if you start watching one of my videos and I say, I think I watched the censored version and that makes you not want to watch the video, please don't feel bad about not watching the video. And... Since I've, I've mentioned that I will sometimes talk about gore in, in videos, I tend to bring this up when I, when I do videos that, about movies and games and such that have violence and gore, but I'm, yeah, I'm saying it here as well. I don't have a problem with violence and gore in general. The Thing is one of my favorite horror movies and movies in general. I also love Cronenberg's The Fly, Videodrome, scanners you know basically the I, I find that violence can be useful to explore certain things in a I, I find that the fly for example is an excellent exploration of how I'm going to try to see if I can remember exactly how David Cronenberg, who is, I try not to abuse the word genius because it loses all meaning if you use it for things that, okay, that's not actually genius. You just really like it. I think David Cronenberg qualifies as a genius, a cinematic genius. Basically, the, the, yeah, let me think. What David Cronenberg described the fly as is how disease changes who you are. And I, I have to admit, I didn't realize that before I heard him say it. I forget if it's a documentary on the DVD or if it's commentary track or what. 
But the moment he said it, I completely understood what he meant. And that really is like, I mean, surface level, that movie, yeah, this is not a spoiler. It starts happening very early on. A man is starting to, you know, basically develop the traits of a housefly, basically. I, actually, I forget if it's a housefly, but a, a fly. But if you, you know, it's, it's one of those things where horror explores something uncomfortable by making it a metaphor or such. When you watch that movie, to some extent, it is like watching someone with, for example, cancer. And that's, that's not a pleasant thing to watch. And that's probably why he uses, you know, basically metaphor. He, he displaces it. It's not about cancer. It's about this science experiment gone wrong. Cancer is something that affects countless people worldwide. So movies that explore what that's like are extremely important. Now, and since I also sometimes bring up this other, you know, other things that are sometimes censored. I, you know, the, again, the following I sometimes say at the start of individual videos, but I'm also putting it here. I don't have a problem with film sexuality, nudity, disturbing and upsetting material in general. Monster is one of my favorite movies. And let's see. And I sometimes bring up that. Yeah, I forget. It's been a while, I think, since I last brought this up, but I eventually added it to the... I have like a... like a... what's it called? Of, um... A pre... a prepared kind of thing of, like, stuff I might bring up. And, yeah, basically... I try not to cry during movies since I appear on camera so soon after watching, and I believe it would be distracting to viewers if it was very clear that I had recently cried. At that point, I find that then then you as a viewer start, you know, like, suddenly you're not thinking so much about the movie specifically, you're maybe empathizing with the reviewer and thinking, I feel bad that they, you know, cried. Or maybe you're thinking, what about this movie made you cry? You know, maybe you think it's strange. But the, yeah, so some movies make it very hard not to cry. And I, it's been a while since I brought that up, but sometimes that is, yeah. Now, until recently, I could sometimes end up sometimes just reading aloud descriptions and lines that are not necessarily interesting in and of themselves when, you know, sometimes when voice typing or taking notes on, you know, pad of paper, when in movie th the movie theater, sometimes I'll just note something because I feel at the time it's important and basically the idea is when I get around to bringing that up in a video I want to talk about why I feel it's important rather than just quoting it and sometimes I it's it's a process I'm gonna try not to just read those loud and something I've started doing recently I'm probably gonna do this a lot Sometimes, in order to explore why something in movie, TV show, or video game is good or bad, or could be better or worse, I will create a hypothetical where I pretend I can change anything about the property that I wanted, and thus explain alternatives. You know, and yeah, I've, I've found that's a very useful way to get into why something is good or bad and what 
alternatives could be and you know and sometimes like I said sometimes these are completely okay that would never actually happen but that's me explaining you know yeah I'm, I'm exploring something through that I'm, I'm not saying this movie is bad because I can think of a hypothetical that would never happen that would be better you know that's not very useful information now on or before the yeah I'm just gonna yeah the the 23rd of the 9th in 2017 I changed my approach to reviewing before I get into what I changed it to I want to say what I changed it from and I wanted to say I greatly appreciate the fans who enjoyed my old style. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, please don't expect the, you know, I'm, I don't do a lot like that anymore. So the, the, yeah, you know, the, the, if, if, if that is the kind of thing you want, you should probably stick to my old videos and not watch my newer ones because you'll just find them frustrating and not deliver on what you expected. Basically, I was primarily inspired by Spoonie or the Spoonie one, Noah and Twyler, both as far as comedy and as far as analysis go. And, you know, I, I'm just briefly going to say I really hope that Spoonie, I don't know, you know, it seems like right now he's maybe not in the best place. I really hope that it, it works out for him. I think he's incredibly talented, and yeah. So I would also compare the, the style to other video producers that I only learned about later, Film Brain and much more recently, Diaz Deacon. Keeping in mind, the following is not meant to insult them, only describe them. I... I believe that they they are doing they're approaching it the way they want to do it and I think they should keep doing that you know I it's not how I want to do it anymore but I enjoy it when they do it and certainly there is a, a huge audience for this sort of approach basically the you know the approach is trying to find everything wrong with what you're reviewing and go into great detail about why a concept doesn't make a lot of sense. This is especially something that Spoonie would do. You especially see it in some of his Final Fantasy reviews where he will spend minutes on a single subject explaining all the different things he thought of about it that don't make sense or are badly done. You know, basically, before I myself changed my approach, approach, I, you know, I came to notice something about them. Like Phalus, after a while, it felt like they're never that happy while making, yes, yeah, so, to some extent, never happy at all while making the show. They just keep forcing themselves to watch and play things that make them miserable, and I I used to myself force myself to you know I would basically say well this is you know that's that's just how it is I'm going to watch every single you know for example I I am it won't be anytime soon but I am I I think I will do more videos on the in, in individual videos on the movies in the Friday the 13th series when I did them the first time, I basically did go into it thinking, I'm going to find everything that's wrong about this. You know, I'm going to criticize the things. And, you know, I, I rewatched them more recently. Uh, let me think. Be right. Because I wanted to review Halloween 2 and Halloween Resurrection. Because those are the two Halloween movies I only have on VHS. And my VCR will eventually give out. So I favored those. I am doing more videos on the rest of the Halloween movies as well. But 
yeah, more recently rewatching it, there's a lot to enjoy in those movies. They're not all amazing, but they were made by people who wanted to put something entertaining on the screen. You know, there there's definitely some messed up values in some of them, but they weren't made to make people miserable. So I I far be it from me to tell anyone how to live their life. But if you keep watching something that makes you miserable, you know, may, please try to, you know, take a step back and consider, do I have to keep watching this? And would I maybe prefer not to? And that was the thing I found after a while, I stopped, you know, watching movies that I expect are going to be bad you know, and, and playing video games, I expect to, are going to be bad and such. So, yeah. And to return to, you know, some, for some of them, I spend a while thinking that they didn't really like, you know, making these, you know, because that's something I think maybe some content creators forget. A lot of people only watch the videos, you know, now with Twitter, there, there are other options that they can, you know, express other feelings. But sometimes all you see of a content creator is the videos they make. And if they're always, you know, you can't always tell if they're pretending to be upset about something. If they always seem upset and they're always talking about the same things, you know, you start to wonder, maybe this isn't, maybe you just feel like you have to do this, but maybe you don't really have to, you know, if you keep talking about the same thing and you're always upset about it, I mean, if it's the news or politics or such, sadly, that does make a lot of sense. There is a lot to be upset about, but by talking about it, you can help change things, but there's a lot about movies that isn't going to change, even if a lot of people online criticize it, especially if those people aren't really in the intended demographic. And sometimes you'll see Phelous criticizing a horror movie made for teenagers and talking about how it doesn't... I mean, he, he's basically approaching... He's not approaching it from, would a teenager like this? He's approaching it as, I like horror movies, but I didn't like this. And, for example, he, he made... Um, I'm afraid I don't remember offhand their names, but there's one about Facebook. Fr friend? Friend? Something. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it's called. There's one about Facebook. There's two about Skype. And some of... F for sure, some of the things he says, okay, that's, yeah, that's evidence of bad filmmaking. But some of the things he criticizes... I haven't watched those movies. But I probably will eventually, and from it's it sounds like I might enjoy them, and it seems as though he's more yeah he's like he's a teacher, you know what's what's it called like correcting a, an assignment someone handed him, you know he talks in in some of those videos about here it's very clear that they cut, and you 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 can see it and. I don't know that everybody notices stuff like that. I agree that it's it's a sign of bad filmmaking, but I I yeah, more more to the point. Some of the things he criticizes, he when he talks about them to me, they sound like that that is how I think it it should be. And this, you know, he talks about how the the for example the Facebook, you know, Oh, you know, why would you care that much about, you know, if you how many Facebook friends you have? To some teenagers, it is extremely important. And the idea of, like, a horror movie centered around losing Facebook friends. Yeah, I mean, that is probably kind of silly. But, again, that's, like, it's exploring something they, you know... It's been some years now since I was a teenager, as you can maybe, you know, deduce. As far as I remember, yeah, the idea of, you know, how many 
people like me? How many people in my social circle approve of me? That did feel like life or death. I don't think it is illogical to make a horror movie where it it's given those kinds of stakes. And I gotta say, the the Skype horror movies they seem like they really appeal to me personally. You know, and I've I haven't used Skype in like ten years, so it's not that I'm like ooh Skype everything Skype. But yeah, I I it just feels like this was never gonna be a movie for him, and it's not made to appeal to him, but he does talk about it. And I'm not saying there's something wrong with him talking about it. I just think, you know, maybe maybe stop and consider, is this just making me upset? Do I really want to keep focusing on these things? But, you know, yeah. Uh, in time, these content creators did prove they can make videos of them enjoying stuff. You know, Spoonie made counter monkey videos. It's completely clear. You know, sometimes he's like, ah, that player really pissed me off or something. But it's like, this is a subject he cares about, and him talking about it isn't making him angry. You know, it's it's exciting and it's fun, both for him and for us. You know, it can be fun to watch someone be angry about something, but if the, you know, if the noise becomes the norm, that's not, it's not healthy to be angry all the time. And, you know, Phelous, I forget what it's called, but he would talk about, or does, I, I don't watch the videos anymore because they're not for me. They're just, but he, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't remember what it's called, but he will talk about discount toys, you know, knockoff versions of toys, and he'll, like, play with them and give them, like, characters based on, for example, the facial expression, you know, and give, maybe give them names based on, the, well, they sort of look like this other person, you know, and, excuse me, and, excuse me, Film Brain would start, you know, he eventually started doing projector. In addition, excuse me, not completely replacing. I do think that would be too bad. Bad movie beatdown. You know, for a while, he only did bad movie beatdown. And there was a, you know, and maybe it's also maybe sometimes not everything is made for binging, you know, but. There was a time where I just sat down and binged his videos. I had watched all of them before, but I only watched them when they first came out. Then when I sat down and binged and watched one after another after another, I realized he's angry almost all of the time in a lot of those videos. Maybe most of those videos. You know, sometimes he'll make, like, jokes where he doesn't seem that angry, but a lot of the time he's... And again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but he's describing the thing and saying what's wrong with it in an angry tone while looking directly at the camera. And just until he started doing projector, sometimes it came off as maybe just he doesn't, I, I, not necessarily that he doesn't enjoy anything he watches, but that he seeks out almost that almost everything he watches is something that he doesn't enjoy and that he almost intentionally you know he chooses things to say you know and but but yeah with projector he you know there are there are many reviews many of his projector reviews he's very happy he's ecstatic to talk about this this movie that completely understands how to approach these things and it really made him think about this this and this it was really great and really appreciate the artistry and you know that's that's more the sort of thing that I want to you know anyway and with DSD can you can really tell he's talking about something that he's really happy exists when he talks about HP Lovecraft adaptations for example you know some of them he says ah this was kind of bad but some of them he's like this is incredible you know and you know, the 
again, you know, when, when you hear him talk about like Final Destination 5, for example, you know, if you only watch those of his videos, he can seem as though he just, he only watches stuff he hates and, and such. And yeah. So I continue to watch the work, of, all the work of the aforementioned, except for Phalus and DSD. And for Phalus, I watch his reviews, but not really anything else he does. For DSD, can I watch everything except most of the Let's Plays, and I think he like reviewed Absinthe once. Again, I'm sure there's an audience for that. It's just not for me. I very rarely watch Let's Plays. I did love the ones he did on Amnesia. Let's see. Yeah, he he did the the second one. I and the Outlast games and X Men Origins Wolverine. Those were amazing, and that's also I haven't played. I haven't played Outlast 2 yet, but I do own it, and like I said, the moment my wrists are better, I am really, really psyched about playing that. I haven't played the version of X-Men Origins Wolverine that he, you know, did a video on, but I did, you know, I, I wanted to see what it was like, basically. And Amnesia, I really love those games, although I there, there are things about them that I don't love, but... Overall, I love those games. Yes, including the Machine for Pigs. Despite how many times they use the word pig and synonyms. Anyway, not long before 20, the 23rd of 9th, 2017, I felt it was simply no longer how I wanted to make videos. I did not want to focus, continue focusing on calling out negative things. Honestly, I realized that that was something that other people seemed to want from me more than it was what I wanted to do myself. With that said, I'm not saying my videos from back then are bad or that I didn't enjoy making them. And if you enjoy them today, that's great, but I probably won't make more so negative in focus. And yeah, I heard someone mention, I also don't so much seek out bad stuff on purpose anymore. And while I do still believe that it is important to criticize the things that should be criticized, since otherwise things will never get better, I now also believe that it's important to praise the stuff that is genuinely great, since otherwise we're less likely to get more of that. You know, I find that basically, if you've ever encountered a, you know, someone who creates something, and I, I don't know if you, not everybody wants to call all, all of it art. But if you know someone who writes, makes movies, paints, draws, makes music, there is a... I'm going to try hard not to say something offensive. I think it is very difficult. I myself used to. I used to write. I used to work on movies. And no, you're not going to see any of them because I know today that they're not. Yeah. I, I am most likely never going to upload any piece of filmmaking that I haven't already put on, on my channel. That's, yeah. I am... Yeah, I, I, I no longer write or work on my own movies and such. But basically, you, you put your heart into this stuff, you know. And, and sometimes other people see it and say, well, it doesn't seem like you work very hard. Some people, you know, not everyone is equally good at these things. And, you know, and, and some things also don't appeal to everyone and such, but when someone criticizes something you've made, it can feel like they're calling you a bad person or, you know, saying something about you personally is bad. So when, if, if all you get when you express yourself is negative attention, you just choose, you eventually stop expressing yourself or you only express you know, your anger, because that, you know, because you keep getting angry, because people keep 
expressing negative, you know, and that is something, when I was younger, the, the vast majority of interactions with other people, they would highlight the negative about me, and that's part of where I got the idea that when you talk about pieces of media and what other people are like, you should focus on the negative. And yeah, eventually I realized that's that's not who I want to be. That's not what I want to do. And I think it is like, I mean, you can you can look at like, for example, Michael Bay's movies have been criticized. I mean, when when did he start? Like ninety six or something? When did he start making movies? I f I forget. He's been criticized for over 20 years now. He keeps making them. Some of the more recent ones, I haven't watched. Let's see, the last movie he made that I watched, I believe, would be Bad Boys 2. And that was back when I watched movies I knew would be bad. You know, the first one isn't particularly good either. Anyway, as far as I understand, some of the most recent movies he's directed are some of his worst so it doesn't seem to put a dent that a lot of people are criticizing his work. But when you look at some of the, the, the filmmakers who've gotten a lot of praise for something they've done, they keep making you know, and honing their craft. I think it's very important to do that as well. Today, I'm very inspired by Everything Great About, a.k.a. The Cinema Wins Channel, I'm nowhere near as good at it as he is, but that goes for the other inspirations as well. But really, I think fundamentally, I think you, I think it could come across as kind of snarcastic and sardonic and, and kind of you know, kind of jerk behavior to create a, a, a YouTube channel that has the exact opposite goal from someone else's channel. But I don't think that's what it... I, I feel like he just felt, well, CinemaSins is always talking about how bad things are. I want to talk about how good things are. You know, and the the yeah, I I feel he does really great. You know, I used to watch a lot of cinema sins, and I I do still think some of you know I'm the New Mutants is coming out, so I'm rewatching a bunch of videos about the X Men movies. You know, and like. His video on X Men Origins Wolverine, and I want to say the last, the one he did for Last Stand, they're pretty decent videos. You know, the the problem with CinemaSins begins when he starts doing movies that aren't particularly bad, and he tries to get long videos out of it. So he talks about things that aren't actually bad and misunderstand things, misunderstands things and such. You know, when when you just have the the yeah, anyway. No matter how much I ever enjoyed Cinema Sins, I enjoy Cinema Wins infinitely more. I think it's much more you know, he doesn't in in addition to the the kind of you know, the stuff that comes up as he's watching it, he also, like, like, basically, Cinema Sins, he'll, like, see something or hear something, he'll be like, oh, I got a comment on that, and he'll, you know, write down a comment to that, and such. Cinema, C Cinema Wins will also talk in, you know, he, he does, like, uh, what's the term? A con conclusion. Where he'll talk about, for example, the music. You know, instead of just each time the music sounds good to him, instead of him pointing it out each time, he 
will take a, a little time in the conclusion to talk about what it does, why it's good, and, and these sorts of things. Now, so... Right, I had forgotten that, right, here we go, yeah, I thought this was just a copy of something else I had. This is where it starts to, yeah, here we go, yeah, earlier I mentioned, you know, some movies frustrate the audience intentionally, it doesn't automatically make it bad. Not all movies need to have very surprising and complex stories, if that isn't what it's about. The 2012 movie Dread, not the 2009 movie Dread, which they're spelled differently, but it's hard to hear pronunciation different, shouldn't be criticized for a lack of story. That's not what it wants to focus on. You know, the, the world building in that is incredible, and the sort of moment-to-moment -moment stuff, you know, the the... Yeah, it is. You can you can criticize that it made that choice, but it's silly to spend a lot of time talking about how the story isn't. You know, the the story should take place over a longer period of time, for example. And you know, Red Eye is a movie that focuses largely on a few settings and a short span of time. You can dislike that movie, but it, yeah, I think. And the two neighbors movies, or what is it, the bad neighbors, because in, in the UK, because there's an Australian soap opera called Neighbors. Anyway, the two neighbors movies are episodic by design, and so should be criticized somewhat more like a sitcom binge than comparing them that much to non episodic uh, comedy. Yeah. Now, I made, relatively speaking, shorter videos in the past, and I make, by any standard, long videos currently. This is in part because I have a lot of free time in the weekends, which I didn't used to, but I'm also a lot better at analyzing than I used to be. A long video doesn't mean, like, oh, I'm enjoying hearing myself talk. You know, I, I don't keep making a video after I think I've run out of interesting things to say. Now... I'm not saying that the kind of movies that appeal more to me are better than anybody else's. And it varies how much I talk politics in a video. It depends on how well I understand the subject, how important I consider it to be. And the same thing goes for when I talk about serious sus sub subjects and whether I go for being funny or for communicating something important. It's my personal opinion that every piece of fiction conveys some values and perceptions of the world. This includes the ones that were slapped together lazily. Values and perceptions are not exclusive to those who think hard about them. It's possible that they didn't realize while they were making the movie that the values and perceptions were there. Maybe they're even in denial that they think that way about things. But there will always be something there, and sometimes I think it's very useful to look at if these values and perceptions, you know, if, if they are helpful or harmful. So that one's for all the people who say I look too hard into, you know, I, I, I read too much into things. I'm well aware that I overanalyze. I don't consider it a weakness of mine even though it may not exactly be a strength either. Again, I don't put stuff in these videos that I don't, you know, want to be in here. Let's see. You know, yeah, as a, as a real quick example, you know, it's, it's one of those things where people may not realize the things that you take out of something, they only see what you put in. You know, I've seen other YouTubers, you know, for example, eat something while, you know, take a brief break from talking about something and eat while recording video without, like, turning the camera off and then turning it back on after, you know, 
that's not something I, I I doubt I'll ever do that and I don't think I ever have you know and I I very rarely drink while recording I just I find it distracting and I don't especially want to watch someone eat like if I if I if I'm trying to if I'm listening to someone talking and then they take a break from talking and, and eat like if I'm like sitting down to eat dinner with them you know yeah that's that comes with the territory but if I'm watching a video they've made it it kind of it kind of takes me out of it you know now because I just don't have enough expertise when it comes to the following while I'm not saying there's anything wrong with enjoying it I very rarely review it once, once again this is me saying please don't expect me to cover the following subjects it's not me saying there's something wrong with the following subjects anything animated anything child oriented family oriented including something that focuses on family dynamics even if it isn't aimed for or appropriate for young audiences anything that deals with sports sports sorry it's because I didn't put a comma between sports and car. So for a second there, I thought, oh, do we mean sports car? No. Sports, car stuff, creative expression outside of movies, TV, and video games, including anything on a stage, theater, anything on a stage, not limited to, but including theater and musicals. And I'm also talking like, you know, paintings, books. And movies and TV shows that are not genre, you know, horror, science fiction, action, and thriller, those are the genres that I cover. It's much more rare for me to review comedy, fantasy, adventure, western, crime, mystery, period pieces, dramas, foreign films, except for the Scandinavian ones. In general, I know more about American films than any other kind of film. With some exceptions, I have watched some German ones, most of them about Nazis. So, that was a long section. Okay. Favorite YouTube content, or YT content, excuse me. Before I get into any of my favorite stuff, I'm not saying any of these are flawless or that there isn't stuff that I dislike about them. That's not what these lists are for. And the, the opposite goes for the least favorite stuff I list. So YouTube channels and or content that I watch a lot in no particular order. And I'm not mentioning the ones are, I mentioned earlier in the video. Young Turks, Bad Lip Reading, Botnik, Folding Ideas, Lindsay Ellis, Renegade Cut, Brows Held High, Vampire Reviews, Rift Tracks, MST3K, Rat Critic, Top in the Shadows, Daily Show, Colbert, John Cosart, I'm not entirely sure he's still making videos. I, I just, I really don't want to be one of the, you know, he made a, a video where he pointed out that a lot of people apparently post, I, I don't read comment sections, but apparently a lot of people post in his comment section Oh, it's been a year since you last posted anything, you know. I used to watch a lot of Cracked, but they're not putting up new videos since they went under. I love college humor, and I hope they can find a way to stay afloat. I realize they apparently weren't doing well financially. And when, you know, when they were making videos, I followed Neon Harbor. I Not everything they made was for me, but, well, you know. I, I, maybe I should just straight up make a playlist called Neon Harbor stuff because I reviewed a lot of their stuff. But anyway, so ones I only recently discovered and so can't vouch for completely, but enjoy what I've seen of theirs: Jenny Nichols, JXI, The Birdman, and Transfer Fails. I used to watch a lot of Nostalgia Critics, so I reference that a lot in older videos and sometimes still. Once again, I'm not reviewing any of the following, but I do love the writing of Philip K. Dick, Isaac Asimov, and Ray Bradbury. 
and that takes us to favorite and least favorite directors. So I love the vast majority of the MCU. Honestly, you know, when I recorded this video, the most recently released was Far From Home. And honestly, so far, the only one that I don't love is Iron Man 2. And I like it. I just don't love it. I, When I watched it the first time, I really, really didn't like it. But re-watching and sort of looking at what it sets up and helps to, to later kind of... Yeah. Anyway. I love the films of... I'm going to try to pronounce this right. Michael Haneke. And I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed to admit, currently that does only include... The Piano Teacher, and The White Ribbon, but those are both amazing, and I do intend to watch more of his. I, yeah, almost all of this is directors, but I do have a couple of writers. I love some of the films written by David Coep, in particular Dark Angel, no, not the Jessica Alba one. I haven't watched that one, for all I know it's great, I'm just saying. The, the one I've watched and love is, is the... Brian Benben -Ben Dolph Lundgren movie. You have got to watch that movie if at all you like. Yeah, I'm I I'm pretty sure I made a video on it. If you if you're not sure, you know, watch my video on that movie to see if you like it. But yeah, Dark Angel, The Shadow, and the original Mission Impossible movie. The, the Shadow, absolutely love that, but I'll... Yeah. I'm not gonna... This video will get way too long if I really dwell on the individual. Anyway. I'm gonna try not to butcher his name. Tarsem Singh is a director that... I wish I loved the work of as much as I feel he has potential. The Fall is incredible. Immortals is perfectly fine. I haven't watched The Cell, Mirror, Mirror, or Selfless, but it just doesn't sound like they're worth watching, which, yeah, really, really sucks. He's, his visuals are incredible. I love Christopher Nolan. Absolutely everything he's made except Dunkirk. And, and I haven't watched Following. But that's the only one of his I haven't watched. And Dunkirk is the only one of his that I wish I hadn't watched. I love a lot of John Carpenter's work. I'm not going to list it because honestly, I mean, okay, let me, let me briefly, I guess, let me put it this way. I've watched everything of his that I've been able to, and... Really, the only stuff of his that I don't love is some of the stuff he made in the '90s and since then. That's that's it. And I don't, I don't. It's possible since I haven't watched all of them, but of the ones I've watched, he hasn't made a movie that doesn't have something going for it. You know, the my least favorites are Vampires, Ghosts of Mars. The Ward and Village of the Damned, and none of those are complete wastes. There's there's something there. You know? I love Darren Aronofsky, with The Fountain being the one exception. Yes, I do love Mother. I love the work of Edgar Wright, although I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen any of it since Hot Fuzz, but I do love, you know, ah, give me a second. What's it called again? Spaced, ah, what's it called, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. I watched all of them recently and just absolutely love them. I love some of Robert Rodriguez's work, basically the stuff that he did well. I love Quentin Tarantino. Not saying that there's nothing problematic, but I do love his work. I enjoy the work of Paul W. Anderson, but not because it's good, but because it's bad in a fun way. And also, to some extent, I will say, he knows his audience. He knows what teenagers want to see in these, you know, 
when I was a teenager, I I already knew that some, there were bad things about his movies, but there were things I loved about his movies, completely unironically. And then since then, I've, you know, but he knows how to appeal to teenage audiences, you know. I, again, I don't think I've ever watched a Paul W. S. Anderson movie where I just felt, well, this is just completely, I mean, his heart wasn't really in it, or there's nothing here that's at all interesting. Now, I love the first four films Andrew Nichol directed. Yes, even Sim Simone or Sim One. I'm ashamed to admit I haven't watched the later stuff he's done. I realize he did the host thingy. That one's apparently real bad. I probably will eventually watch all of his work. I love a lot of David Iyer's work, Harsh Times, Street Kings, and Watch and Fury. I'm not going to make excuses for Sabotage or Suicide Squad, and I haven't watched Bright. I just realized something that's very important for me to write down, so I'm just really quickly going to make sure that I write it. I'm going to try not to leave any dead air, even though it means that I can't say what I'm writing because it's not particularly relevant to the current video. And I realized that talking incessantly isn't the same as communicating. That's such a great movie. I, I think I might watch that again soon. And yeah, if you love that movie and want to hear my thoughts, I did make a video. For, for those who have no idea, I, it's because I just referenced, I just quoted, it's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So, the... Ah. I got distracted. See, the thing with writing one thing and saying another is that it can be difficult to focus... So the thing that I wanted to, hmm, let me think, what it was, that's right, that was what I wanted to write, Now, I love nearly all I've watched by David Cronenberg, A Dangerous Mind, this, sorry, A Dangerous Method, Eastern Promises, History of Violence, Spider, Existence, The Fly, Videodrome, and Scanners. I love some of Ridley Scott's work. <laughs> yeah, you know what? The 2010 Robin Hood, I really don't think it's as bad as people say. Maybe it's not the best or the, like, Definitive, but it's I I love it. And Body of Lies, American Gangster, which is also a movie that for sure it's not quite as good as Scarface and Godfather. I love Black Hawk Down, Gladiator, Legend. I love James Cameron's films, especially the The Terminator and Aliens. Yeah, just brief. The reason that. I was listing th those other movies backwards in chronological order is that I copied the list in from IMDb and there it came in backwards for reasons. I love some of John Woo's work, especially Face Off. I love Paul Verhoeven, especially Starship Troopers, Total Recall, and Robocop. I love James Mangold for his work with the Wolverine character. I love the Russo brothers for the MCU movies they've made. I love the Wachowskis for Bound and the first Matrix movie. Brian De Palma for The Black Dahlia, Snake Eyes, Mission Impossible, Raising Kane, The Untouchables, Scarface, Carrie, and Obsession. I love his camera work, his long takes, his use of slow motion, his climaxes. I love Tim Burton, Peter Jackson for Lord of the Rings, and to an extent, the Hobbit trilogy. Danny Boyle for Sunshine, 28 Days Later, The Beach, Train Spotting, and no, I that 
you've you've guessed correctly the last thing up is i watched was in fact slumdog millionaire and no it's not that i gave up on him i honestly i don't know exactly why i haven't watched anything he's made since then i want to of Gregory Hoblet, Luc Besson, Louis Beterrier for The Incredible Hulk, Transport, Transporter 1 and 2. Okay, I'm going to try not to butcher. Jean-Jacques Anon for Enemy at the Gates. Could be better, but it's there. I, I acknowledge that it has weaknesses, but there are great things about this one. And more so, Quest for Fire and The Name of the Rose, and th those are all that I've seen him do, and I would like to watch more of his. I realize that Ron Perlman isn't going to be in all of it, but those two really do work well together. I love Kurt Wimmer for Equilibrium, Terry Gilliam for Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Twelve Monkeys, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, Brazil, the parts he did of The Meaning of Life, Time Bandits, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Alejandro Amenavar for The Sea Inside, The Others, Open Your Eyes, and Thesis, Guy Ritchie for the Sherlock Holmes movies, Snatch, and Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which are all I've seen of his work. I've been warned off some of the other of his work. Stanley Kubrick for Eyes Wide Shut, Full Metal Jacket, The Shining, Barry Lyndon, A Clockwork Orange, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, Lolita, Spartacus, and The Killing, which, and, and those are all I've seen of his except Fear and Desire, which is only okay. I love Kenneth Branagh for Thor. Let's see. And Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And Sergio Leone for The Dollars Trilogy, Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon a Time in America. And, yes, Neville Dean Taylor for Crank 1 and, to a lesser extent, Crank 2. And listing here least favorite movie directors. And this is not to crap all over these people. This is in order to help give potential viewers a sense of what I'm going to review and whether I'm or not I'm going to give it a positive review. A lot of these people, I'm not going to review. I'm not going to review their stuff. I'm just saying... Now you know that if, you know, yeah, that's how I'm going to approach work similar to theirs. Yeah, some of this is going to get in hate. Stephen Somers, Rob Bowman, Jonathan Mostow for Terminator 3 and Surrogates. When I record this, I haven't watched U571 yet, but from what I can tell, it's well done, but really, you know, historically inaccurate and other issues. Maybe I'll end up liking that one, but I certainly really, really don't like, yeah. And Rick Rosenthal, yes, for both of his Halloween movies, not only Resurrections. I don't know anything else he's done, so it's possible he's done great work elsewhere. And he's maybe just not ideal for Halloween, the franchise. And Michael Bay, who, to reiterate, I watched what he did... Let's see, the, the first I watched of his... Excuse me. Is the first Bad Boys movie, and I think... Wait, no. Wow. I keep forgetting. No, he's the one who did The Island. I did watch The Island, and it's hilarious to watch that movie, having watched the MST3K of Parts the Clone is Horror, because it's the... Yeah, that's kind of a spoiler. There are a lot of similarities there. And... But yeah, that's right. I did watch The Island. That's the last one of his I've seen. I'm not certain I watched everything he did in between those two movies, but I watched several of them, and I just cannot with his movies. I, I really can't. I get the appeal of some of them. I've, I've, I'm really glad that I decided to steer clear of his Transformers movies, because based on what Lindsay Ellis says when she talks about them, 
it really sounds like I would hate them. And once again, I'm not saying for sure I know they're bad movies because I haven't watched them, but it sounds like I certainly wouldn't enjoy them. And yeah, she she does really great analysis. If you haven't watched, if you like Lindsay Ellis at all, and you haven't watched her videos on the Transformers movies, definitely watch those. So that brings us to the next section. My favorite movies and TV shows. So a while back, I sat down to try to think about whether or not The Terminator is my absolute favorite movie. So I came, you know, I thought of others that I would put near the top, and eventually, the, the this list got super long. So, and and you know. This is the most updated list, so if you hear, you know, I put it in another video a little while back, excuse me. Trust me, this is the most, you know, as of the date I upload this video, this is by far the most updated list, and it has additions on there that are much more recent. Anyway, yeah, the list got super long, these are titles only, no particular order, no detail, English titles for non-English ones, and I'm not saying these are the best movies ever made, but they are my favorites. Halloween from 1978. The Thing from 1982, I suppose I should, just to make absolutely certain no one's unclear. Escape from New York. The Matrix. All four Avengers movies. Captain America Civil War. The, the Ring. American remake. Yes, I know. I should watch the original too. I haven't gotten my hands off a copy. Open Your Eyes, Street Kings, The Wave, The Piano Teacher, First Blood Part 1, The Blues Brothers, Mother, Noah from 2014, The Shadow from 1994, Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, Con Air, the first two 90s Adams Family movies, the live action ones, I forget if there were animated ones around that time, The Road, Payback, both of Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street films, Honestly, as well as Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Scream 1 and Scream 4, Rosemary's Baby, District 9, Metropolis from 1927, Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. I have also watched Invasion from 2007, but so far those are the only two that I've watched. Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman, Birds of Prey, Prince of Darkness, They Live, Dark Man, A Simple Plan, Candyman from 1992. As I record this video, the new one hasn't come out yet, but, you know, that's just a matter of... I, I forget how many months from now, and that one is also simply titled Candyman, so now people have to start... That looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm, that's, I'm not going to get into detail about that here. Hellraiser 1. And listening here, my favorite TV shows, Two and a Half Men, the entire run, Married with Children, the entire run. Prison Break, season one through three. I haven't watched season five yet. Season four is not as good as the first three. South Park, even though the centrism is frustrating. What I've seen of American Dad, and I'm afraid I don't really know which seasons, and I have no idea how much. Seasons two through seven of The Simpsons. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Dexter, seasons one, four, and six. And there. Favorite video games. So my my top four are. The, yeah, the following four are tied for first place. Deus Ex One, Thief of the Middle Age, System Shock Two, and Prince of Persia: The Two Thrones. And in no particular order, the rest of my favorite games. Thief, yeah. Thief Gold, or Thief the Dark Project Gold Edition. Silent Hill 1 through 4, yes, including 4. Just Cause 1 through 3, I haven't played 4 yet. I'll buy it if or when the reviews on Steam convince me they've fixed the problems. 
which was how I approached the third game, Bioshock Infinite, Bioshock 2 as well. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which is the only Far Cry I've played at all. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Half-Life 1, haven't played Half-Life 2 yet. Portal 1 and 2, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. Outlast and its expansion pack, like I mentioned, I haven't played the second one yet. Though I do own it, I'm looking forward to playing it. And here's a list of games that I love, but they're not quite my favorite. Splinter Cell Blacklist, Prince of Persia, basically all of them except 3D, and I haven't played the ones that are that are not action adventure. I saw that there was one that was like a strategy game. I sorry, that is not. I I I like strategy games, but I really don't. I'm not interested in a Prince of Persia game that's a strategy game. But yeah, I love the first two, for example, as frustrating as they can get. Commander Keen, especially the the ones that came out after the third one, but I haven't played the Game Boy one, so not not including that one. And my absolute favorite is the the fourth one, but I've mentioned that in another video on this playlist. Starcraft and Brood War, Commander Con Command and Conquer, from the first of those through General Zero Hour. I've barely played any past that, but I have played, let's see, what was it, the third? Yeah, Command and Conquer 3. I thought there were things about it that were good, but overall it's not really my, yeah. I, I didn't love it. And I did play the expansion pack, Kane's Wrath, as well. It was nice to see some of the people from Lost and Alias appear in the cutscenes. There were good things about it, but overall it wasn't for me. And I haven't played any past that one. Though I do own some of them. And again, my wrists are the only thing keeping me from playing them. Enter the Matrix? Yes, seriously. Not a joke. Not trolling. I'm not saying it's a perfect game. But I love it. And it's not only nostalgia. X-Men Legends 2? Uh, hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is. I did that. Yeah. I haven't played the first one. Star Wars Dark Force series. Less so for Mysteries of the Sith. But yes, I do include Jedi Academy, even though it definitely has some issues. Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Deus Ex 3. Yes, I've played Deus Ex 2. It's not on my list. I haven't play played past Deus Ex 3. What was it called again? Um... Uh, Human Revolution, I haven't played Mankind Divided yet, but I do own a copy. And I'm I'm going to, it's just that until recently, I didn't have Windows 10 installed on a computer that was in any kind of condition to play recent video games, but now I do. I never know how to say this, I guess, 13 in Roman, Roman, Roman numerals. Roman numerals, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing, like, if you don't know what that is, it sounds like nonsense. It sounds like I just said, like, you're, you're probably, like, wondering, is he, having, is he having a stroke? That's not a, that's not a thing. Basically, if you type 13, you know, X-I-I-I, -I -I, if you type that into Wikipedia or GOG or something, you'll find the thing that, you know, I love that game. I love that comic book. I even enjoyed most of the, what was it? Was it the miniseries or was it the T series? I don't remember. I feel like Steven Dorff was in it, but I don't remember which it was. But yeah, I've, I've, everything that, you know, I was, I was in love with it before I knew there was anything other than a comic book. You know, I read the comic book way long ago and it's like, like, if you have no idea what it is, at first, it's basically like, uh, the born identity, but it goes off in a different direction after the, uh, yeah, a, a little while into it. And the game is a very good adaptation of the comic books. They did a really, really good job. And it's such a fun game to play, and the multiplayer is fun. And unfortunately, the, the CD copy I have no longer works, 
and honestly, it's probably, yeah, as soon as it's fairly inexpensive on GOG, I'm going to buy it. Max Payne 1 and 2, no, not free. Kane Lynch 1 and 2, all of the Fear Games and Expansion Packs, Nocturne, Obscure 1 and 2, the Expansion Pack, Bioshock 2, Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2, Penumbra, Amnesia, and Soma, all of the individual ones from those. Prisoner of War. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1. I haven't played the second one yet, but I do own it on Steam. I'm really looking forward to it because it's apparently, well, part of why I'm looking forward to it is it's apparently based on the Civil War comic book storyline, so that's great. Age of Empires 1 and 2. I, I played some of Age of Empires 3. I think I just found that it was kind of overwhelming. There was too much freedom to many things. Worms Armageddon. Worms 2 is great as well. TMNT, the video game, the, the adaptation of the 2010 animated movie. The House of Dead 1, The Typing of the Dead, The House of the Dead Overkill. And I haven't played a House of the Dead game past the third one. I forget how many there are by now. Alan Wake, the original, not the standalone expansion pack. Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, the only two that I played, although I do own Origins and Night, and yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to get to them. Contagion, I Am Alive. Mafia 1 and 2, I haven't played 3 yet. I might. Last time I looked at reviews, they described problems so big that I did not want to play it. If those get fixed, I'll play it. Payday 1 and 2. Red Orchestra 1 and 2. Shadow Warrior 1997 and the reboot. I haven't played the second one yet, though I do own it. I got it for free. I forget if it was GOG or Steam, but I got a free copy, and now I got to figure out if I want to because it sounds grindy, and I don't like grinding. Sniper Elite One and Two. I haven't played three and four yet, but I do own them. Again, it's down to my wrists. Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army. Let's see. I played the first one. I haven't played Trilogy. I don't think. But I played the first one, and what is it that the second one? And anyway, yeah, that's that's the one I'm for sure about. Thief 3 and Thief 2014. I don't, yeah, I do love them. I just, it's just not my, quite my favorite. Rack, Mirror's Edge. And hmm, I list here my favorite video game genres. Action adventure, especially platformers. Action, first person shooter, real time strategy. Although I don't tend to play ones that I haven't already played, see the list above, and I'm not sure I'm going to do videos specifically about them. I might do videos where I talk about, like, tendencies or something. I don't know exactly. Third-person shooter, adventure, maybe especially point-and-click. I'm not currently... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to do videos specifically about individual ones because there's only so long you can go on talking for about an individual one without just repeating yourself and such but I do really enjoy those you know I've played all the ones I've gotten free on GOG I don't think there's a single exception for, uh, sorry there might have been some more recent ones those I haven't gotten around anyway I do sometimes play RPG hybrids, you know, the Deus Ex games and the System Shock games, for example, but I very rarely play games that are straight RPG. Now, I play a lot of open world, survival horror, arcade, psychological horror, and horror in general, side-scroller, hack and slash, old school, if I've played it before, you know, retro kind of thing, I'm not really... I don't tend to go back, I, I don't tend to today play something that I haven't, like, I, you know, for example, I, yeah, I still own a copy, but I don't, I think I had trouble powering up my Game Boy last time I tried. I own a copy of Mega Man 2, and I've played it, I've beaten it a bunch of times. There's some chance I might play that again. I'm not sure I'd play Mega Man 1 or Mega Man 3, for example. 
I don't have a problem divorcing it from what expectations are like today. But I, yeah, I, I gotta say, I don't, I, I'm just, they don't appeal to me quite as much as more recent games. Now, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the following genres. They're just genres I more rarely play. So if you, you know, please don't expect me to do videos talking about games that fall into the following genres. And briefly, I have played some within the genre and reviewed some. Anyway, simulation, casual, early access, free to play, multiplayer, sports, racing, co-op, puzzle, beat-em-up or fighting game, crafting, board games, and survival. You know, I mean, I mean, I've played, yeah, honestly, other than Tekken 3 and 4, I haven't played very many fighting games, and I don't tend to, yeah, I really, really love those two games, and was the one called Tekken Tag Tournament, I love that one as well, but I'm not really into other, yeah. Okay, and I believe this is the final section. So this is basically the, yeah, so the section is about me. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be saying anything. This is the final section. I'm not sure I'm going to be saying anything after the simply going into the current about me section on my channel page. You know, if you read it on my channel page, I'm not sure I'm going to be saying anything more in this video that you haven't already read there. But, you know, at the same time, I, the video isn't going to be very long from now. So, anyway. So, I do a weekly, weekly vlog review of a game, film, show, or the like. Roughly one game review every three weeks, although sometimes it takes four weeks or even more, depends on how long the game is. Currently and probably for months, as of the 13th, the 3rd, 2018, video games are on hold as I recover from tennis elbow. <laughs> yeah, I'm just briefly gonna, yeah, there you go. Here's an addition, or a change. I think I might... See, I have a crazy long list of games that I'd like to do videos on. A number of those games are very short. There's some chance that I'm going to try to complete the really short ones within just a couple of days and then do a video. Instead of, like, I like to spend three weeks on a video game because sometimes something occurs to me two weeks into working on a video game review that otherwise I just wouldn't be able to put in the review if I did the review sooner than that. But anyway, yeah, there's there's some chance that the really short ones I'll do, yeah. The video will usually be up some Saturday or Sunday, sometimes later, sometimes my cinema has showings that better fit my daily schedule on weekdays. Depending on the length of the subject and my video on it, I don't do very many show reviews, in part due to the time it takes to watch all the episodes. Leading up to almost any show review, I will do a spoiler-written video on each season as soon as I've watched it, typically every three weeks. It may be moved up or down in the schedule. I review nearly every current comic book adaptation, especially superhero films, and their directors, franchises, etc. that I follow, but otherwise I rarely review current stuff. And if you've watched this entire video, by now you do know some of the, you know, directors, franchises, and such that I follow. I didn't even think about, yeah, I guess I could have made a list of franchises that I follow. Okay, so off the top of my head, it's going to be, I, I'm not sure there's going to be, like, 
it's going to take a lot for me to not do a video on a movie that falls under the umbrella of Mission Impossible. I guess it might, I don't know if they're still going to make more. Paranormal Activity. Let's see. Born, even though I think they should have stopped at three, much less four or five. I don't really do Bond movies. I haven't watched a Bond movie since Goldeneye. It's not that I hated Goldeneye. It's just, I don't, the the character doesn't appear. Oh, sorry. I already mentioned that in another video on this playlist. Anyway, I guess that is pretty much, I'm not sure how many other franchises there are. Halloween. I guess I it might be a long time before there are more movies in the Friday the 13th. The Candyman, even if the new one didn't look incredible, I probably would go watch it. But I was psyched the moment that I heard that I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Director of Get Out and Us is producing. He's not directing. I would love that as well, but I really respect when when someone when a filmmaker says, you know what, maybe I'm not the best person to to direct this movie. I'm gonna produce it. I'm gonna help get people to watch it. But I'm not gonna direct it. You know, and it, it seems like that's basically what he's doing. You know, it is being directed by an African American, I believe, an African American woman. And yeah, I mean, it is. It is, the, the, the story is more, it's very much about black people, so it's, it's really wild that there are so few black people in, especially, in, I think, especially in the sequels, is, is maybe especially in the third one. Anyway, let's see, the, um, yeah, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, if they make more, you know, they haven't made one in like 10 years by now. Um... Matrix, you know, is coming up. Matrix 4, I forget if there's more than one. Avatar. Yeah, I think that might be more or less. And otherwise, you know, most of them I've by now done, you know, I've done videos on at least some in the, in the franchise. Like, a lot of the ongoing franchises that I've done any videos on, that's a franchise I'm going to keep doing videos on as new stuff comes up. It's just, it, it, a movie has to look extremely bad for me to not do one. Now, I think, I think that's basically what there is. Yeah. Yeah, this video got longer than I thought it was going to, but ultimately, let's see. This is not the only video I did today. So, come to, let's see, total, it's like three hours and 20 minutes or so. So, that's about what I average. But, yeah. There's a, you, you can, you can do, you have enough information with the three videos on the, on the playlist of About Me videos. That's enough information to do a mathematical graph on how my videos have gotten exponentially longer the longer I've been on YouTube. Because the first one is way short. I'll, to be fair, that one is specifically a channel trailer. The second one is like 34 minutes or something, and then this one is almost two hours. So, yeah. Anyway. I believe that is absolutely everything, and now that I have a playlist, you know, if I think, I've been putting stuff into this file of notes for a month, I think. If I think of more, you know, I will put, yeah, if I think of more and I feel like, okay, I really should make more videos, then, you know, those videos will go on this playlist, so you can just keep checking this playlist. If you, you know, really badly want to know all the stuff I'll eventually put on there.
I think it, if you if you like click save if if you get the the little check mark thing you know I think you'll be told when I change something on the playlist so you know that's one way to keep track of that yeah that is absolutely everything I did not think of a way to alter the usual sign off which I usually use for right after watching something let me th I'll I'm not gonna waste a crazy amount of time on this I hope you found this informative and I hope you yeah I hope this helps give you an idea of what to expect about stuff that's on my playlist that's yeah stuff I'm gonna be doing videos on and I will catch you next time. Gadget. Every single time I hit stop, I, I think I really need to add that. Anyway, so long.